In the mysterious moment of half-light before the dawn, the full moon cast a ghostly glow over the rain. Then the bold sun peaked above the distant summit, announcing the coming of another day. Slowly the curtain of night withdrew. And at last, the ancient meeting ground emerged from the shadows. Almost bone white in the clear morning light, it stood out like a giant rib of the mountain. This was the place known as Beetle Rock, the scene of our story, and the stage on which nature's drama would be enacted. A day was the time limit of our story. Within that span of hours, between sunrise and sunset, much could happen to change the lives of man and beast, as we're about to see. to appear on the rock was a solitary buck testing the morning air. In the shadows were the members of his herd, the does and fawns and younger bucks that had accepted his authority. At this season, the younger bucks grew restless and began to sharpen their antlers. The herd buck knew that someday one among them would challenge his leadership. Well, let them when they would. The young bucks could take the time to sharpen their weapons as they wished. The more frivolous among them could indulge in mock battles as they chose. Practice for something more serious later. Such things as the mountain lion, that most dangerous of enemies. For the last three years, there'd been no prowling cougar on Beetle Rock. The great cat had hunted elsewhere and life for the deer had been relatively calm. But now the mountain lion was back. The lives of all the deer tribe were in jeopardy. From this moment on, the days of the herd bug would be spent in eternal vigilance. On yet another part of the rock, the cougar's two kittens ventured forth to see a bit of the world on their own. And climbers, they weren't exactly at their best. Perhaps it was their age, for they were at that clumsy stage where they were all feet and legs and nothing was quite coordinated. And they still indulge in the habit of kittenhood. entertainment came from the games they invented to play together, wrestling and catch-as-catch-can. They never seemed to tire of this. As hunters, these kittens weren't the menace their mother was. Not yet, anyway. And it was curiosity that took them abroad more than hunger. The marmot, however, was not about to trust himself to their company. The only thing was, he hadn't counted on their quickness. And they were upon him almost before he knew it. Like all cats, the kittens were intrigued with anything that moved. Here was a kind of pine cone that made the game more fun. It tended to fight back. The 
garment, of course, was merely protecting himself as best he could. And with two against one, the odds weren't exactly in his favor. Still, the tiniest of nature's creatures will put up a desperate battle to live. And the little fellow was holding his own rather well. Beetle Rock was lizard land. Here, miniature dragons took the sun. Some of them almost jewel-like objects of natural beauty. But in nature's realm, beauty came in somber tones too. Even black could seem colorful. When the tarantula took his morning constitution, it meant putting his best dressed foot forward in sequence. All eight of them in proper rotation. the badger was busy renovating his front porch. A digging animal by habit, he spent much of his time in this dusty diversion. When the hungry coyotes came on the situation, they made some quick calculations that were to prove embarrassing. Thinking the badger to be preoccupied with his chores, they felt they could take him off guard. They soon learned that no coyote in his right mind ever tangles with a badger. Pound for pound, probably the toughest fighter in nature. This was the way of Beetle Rock. The laws of survival were the laws of fang and claw and sharp talon. And the red-tailed hawk was a predator to be reckoned with. There was little that went down in these parts that missed his piercing eye. the badger's preoccupation and he was about to make his bid in this game enough of that in the end the hawk decided to pick on someone more nearly his own size in this case the hapless king snake when the hawk stuck to his proper role as raider from the sky, his strategy was practically unbeatable. And now the reptile had little defense to offer. Thus it was that on any given day on Beetle Rock, there were the lucky and the unlucky. All morning long and well into the afternoon, the mountain lion had made her rounds. Patience and with stealth, but without luck. On padded feet, she slipped across the bare stretches of granite, making no sound yet seeing no potential prey. This was the way on Beetle Rock. Often as not, it was the predator who knew disappointment, who at day's end went hungry. Then her 
her pace quicken. Something had caught her eye. Now her long hunting had purpose at last. That something was the herd buck. was occupied with sharpening his antlers for the rutting battles he knew must come. And at this moment, his customary vigilance was not what it might have been. Cougar saw her chance. The herd buck, however, was not to be taken by surprise after all. Battle-wise and wary, he did not panic, but turned away seemingly unconcerned. For he knew a trick or two of this game himself. on purpose, the buck picked out a cul-de-sac in the rocks and put good granite at his back. There was strategy behind his plan and long experience. This maneuver would make the cougar come to him, head on into his sharp and waiting antlers. country. To the creatures of Beetle Rock, the echoing sound and fury meant but one thing, rain. The coming of the rain meant that all game trails were wiped out and all tracks erased. And all preying on each other must come to a moment of pause while nature cleansed her mountain. Now was the time to seek shelter if shelter could be found. And if not, to weather the storm as best one could.
the fury of the storm was soon spent, ceasing almost as suddenly as it came. As the afternoon wore on, the herd buck again took charge of his clam and led them toward the night's bedding ground. His was the vigil that knew no end. Beetle Rock, a moment of calm serenity. Some would listen, and some would sleep, and some would stand guard in the night as the long day came to its natural close. 